In this video, we're going to complete example two using the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. It says that the results from the HSC standard maths examination are normally distributed, meaning it makes that bell curve shape. It then says that the average mark was 60% with a standard deviation of 12%. Now we've got three questions here, A, B, and C, but before we get into these questions, we need to bring up a picture of our bell curve. And here I have it here, and we're going to start by labeling this bell curve before we can get into these questions. Now you might remember that the two most important things we need here are our mean, which is 60%, and our standard deviation, SD, which is 12%. Now whenever you get a question like this, you're not going to have the bell curve drawn for you. You're going to have to sketch it yourself. Now it only needs to be a really rough sketch, but what's important is that it's got a peak and that the peak lines up with your mean. Also you need to have three intervals to the right as well as three intervals to the left of your mean like I've drawn here. So we'll label our mean as 60% and we'll even write down that that is the mean. And because our standard deviation is 12%, we're going to add on 12 each time. So 60 plus 12 is 72%. That's because I added on the standard deviation only once. If I add on the standard deviation twice, then I get 84%. And if I add it on again, meaning I've added on three times, I now get 96%. Let's go to the left side. This time we are subtracting 12% each time. So 60 minus 12 gives me 48% because I've subtracted the standard deviation once. If I subtract it a second time, I will get 36%. And if I subtract it a third time, I will get 24%. Now looking at our rule here, we know that 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Now this area I've marked here is broken into one, two sections. And we can divide 68 by two, giving us 34%, and we can just say that each section must be 34% since both of these add up to 68. So rub out the part that says 68% now that we've broken it into its sections. Next, we know that 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean. Now this 95% area can be broken into one, two, three, four sections. We already know what two of these sections are. We know that two of them are already 34%. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 95% and subtract 34% twice, which is the same as just subtracting 68%. When we do that, what are we going to get? 95 minus 68 is 27%. Now we need to divide this by 2. 27% divide 2 is 13%. 0.5%. So we can label these outer sections as 13.5%, like so. And now we can get rid of the area that's talking about the 95%. The reason we can get rid of it is because we've got our four sections individually labeled. Next, we're looking at what percentage lies within three standard deviations of the mean. That's this large area here that I've labeled in pink. Now we know that 99.7% of the data lies within this pink region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that percentage 99.7% and I'm going to subtract the four sections that I already have a percentage for. Now if I subtract these four, that's the same as subtracting 95% because these four percentages add up to 95%. I will get 4.7% and now all I need to do is take that percentage and divide it by 2. 
giving me 2.35%. So these outer edges are 2.35%, like so. All right, finally, I have my outer edges, which seem to lie outside the bell curve here. We know that we've already used up 99.7% of the data. So there's only 0.3% left over, which when I divide that by 2 is 0.15%. So these outer edges have a very small percentage of 0.15%. And we've got to always remember to label this because a lot of people forget that last little percentage here. All right, now that I've labeled all the parts of my bell curve with these percentages, I can move on to answering the questions. In fact, to clean it up, I might just delete all the working out because it just looks a bit cluttered at the moment. All right, looking at question A, it says what percentage of students received a mark above 96%? So 96% is this point here, and a mark above it goes to the right which means that only 0.15% of the students got a mark above 96%. 0.15%. All right, question B. What percentage of students received a mark between 24 and 84%? So we're going to start at 24% and go all the way across to... 84%. So what percentage of students are in this orange region here? We need to add up all the percentages that lie above that orange line. We need to add 2.35 to 13.5 to 34 and 34 again and also need to add 13.5%. Let's do that now. We have 2.35%. We need to add that to 13. 0.5%, we need to add 34 twice, and then we need to add 13.5% again. Bringing up our calculator, we have 2.35 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 again plus 13.5, giving us 97.35%. So 97.35% of the students received a mark of tw between 24 and 84% in this exam. Now moving on to question C, it says if 30,160 students completed the examination, how many students received a mark less than 36%? So going back to our bell curve, We'll label the part where they got 36%, and we're looking at students that went below that, got marks below 36%. And we can see we've got two percentages here. We've got 2.35% above that pink line and 0.15%. So we'll add them together, 2.35% plus 0.15%. When we add these together, we're going to get... 2.5%. So 2.5% of the students received a mark less than 36%. So we need to find 2.5% of 30,160. To do that, we're going to go 2.5 divided by 100 first, and then we're going to multiply this by 30,160. 2.5 divide 100 times 30,160 gives us 754. So we can assume that 754 students received a mark less than 36%. Anyway, that concludes our video on example two. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.